Uh, good. So we have uh, collectively at the Hackley industry just worked on conflict of interest. So doctors may have uh, interests, financial interests, other interests um, that have a potential to distort their, their clinical practice. Um, to try and keep track on that in the US, there's things like pro, you know, pro public campaigns which disclose to all of the advantage groups who payments to physicians. Uh, in the UK, we made something called Who Pays This Doctor, uh, and it's been funded in the DMJ and recently in the Lancet editorial, and it's got uh, many doctors who have um, voluntarily declared any conflicts of interest they might have uh, here in the one, for example. Now, the issue um, with, uh, with these voluntary declarations is that the coverage uh, isn't, isn't brilliant. So in parallel to this, or actually in part in response to this, the, the ABPI, the Association for the Pharmaceutical Industry, has made a voluntary uh, register for industry, which also has quite poor coverage. So our idea was that we might begin to nudge people uh, towards um, going on the register and making the register slightly less, uh, less voluntary by saying at a certain point, if you haven't put yourself on the voluntary register, it will become possible for people that aren't that doctor to add them to the register. So that's what we've worked on. Uh, the high level workflow is identifying doctors, collecting public domain uh, potential conflict of, uh, uh, conflict of interest information, and then doing something with it. We quickly rediscovered that uh, names are not unique identifiers. So we had a, we had a great idea about possibly triangulating um, between the GMC register and doctors' uh, names that are relevant in public domain. Um, prescribing data and quality of uh, prescribing data um, and, uh, and, and, and data on conflict of interest so for example you could pull from uh, company's house information on directorships so you could say of a particular general practice do they have if they have more directions that associated with better or worse prescribing at a practice level that would turn out to be fine this guy because names do not unique kind of so what we did instead is what, what, what i was mentioning before we made it possible We've, this is the updated version of the website, so you'll see how there's many. I just know it's only one minute. So you see how there's many UI improvements. This is not very pretty for people still using it. Uh, it's much prettier now. We've done all these UI improvements over the weekend, and we've also made it possible to add a doctor. And we've also imported for one group of doctors, those doctors working at the Harley Street. We've imported all that stuff from companies, uh, companies house via open corporate, but using the open corporate API. Any questions? Thank you. What's the traffic of people actually using the website to find out who pays the doctor? You know, what, what's yeah. the real interest in it? So it gets it gets about eight hundred uh, visits a month. It, when those when those publications, for example, um, last week there was a Lancet uh, tour about transparency and who pays the doctor mentioned in it. So it gets, it's it's gone up there. Uh, obviously, we have no idea who the end users are hitting it. We've had a couple of instances of doctors who have made voluntary de declarations and have subsequently emailed us to ask to be removed. So it seems like doctors do care about it. We did remove them uh, at the request. Not sure how we'll deal with that in the future. It's an emerging thing. It is really um, uh, acted as a sort of campaign to try and promote transparency, uh, more transparency in medicine. Just to say that nicely, please, we're always trying to find ways of triangulating the declarations that we've had. But Convince me that it would be it would be accurate. So at the moment it's a voluntary register. The, the cost to a it's and we validate that their doctors using a desktop net email address, you can put in their GMC number. The cost to, to the personal cost to an individual professionally, if they've been found to make have made publicly a voluntary declaration of their interest that subsequently turned out to be incomplete or false, um, could be quite significant with race probity issues, you know, might have problems with the GMC. Um, Beyond that, I think I think the, the model of relying on things which are fairly solid, like for example directorship at like company's house, notwithstanding the difficulty of working out if a particular name belongs to a doctor or just someone that happens to have the same name, um, is, is, is pretty solid. I'm just going to show you one you know, well, we have to see if the question arises. But if somebody says, well, give us one for you example, please. <laughs> you know what the question is? Or is it a question for an example? Just, oh, I was going to say, can you do a, a null declaration? Can a doctor go on the register and say, I have no con, I don't have any interests? They can, yeah. And, so, and I think, I think I, if I haven't stressed this enough, uh, we, it's, 
it's, it's a register of interest. So this, this example that I'm showing is uh, Claire Gerrada, who I know, and I don't think there's anything untoward whatsoever. It's just, it's, I'm also on the register voluntarily put myself on it. And you see like the charitable work that she's doing, for example, is reflected in her directorships. I mean, there's not, uh, it, it cuts both ways, right? And it's not, it's not, it's just about more transparency. There's not a, a negative connotation uh, to, to the thing, I don't think. Thank you. I've got one very quick question, Carl. So, um, obviously, you said this website existed for this weekend. So, yeah. just to, uh, am I right in thinking that the work that you've done over this weekend is to improve the user interface, add some new lookup features, you've done a load of import work? That's a fantastic question, mate. Yeah, that's, that's right. This is, <laughs> this, is before, this is before the weekend, yeah. and this is this is after uh, after the weekend. I'll take you back to the main page that demonstrates all of the, the nice uh, URLs. Yeah, it's cool. And it's it's an open source project. It's on on uh, GitHub. Uh, of course, I should visit it if anyone wants to help improve it. That'd be fantastic. Thank you very much.